Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, ISCB Student Council webinar session. Today we have with us K.M. Salim Andalib from Kulna University and he will talk to us about designing epitopes for the Epstein-Barr uh, virus for a vaccine. So thank you Andalib for being with us today and you can you can start your presentation. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you to ISCB Student Council webinars. And I am KM Salim Andaliv. I'm an undergraduate student of biotechnology and genetic engineering discipline, Life Science School, Kuna University, Bangladesh. And today I'm going to talk about designing the noble epitope based vaccine against the Epstein Barr virus. Now, virus has been one of the most trending buzzwords since the corona situation and literally locked the whole world down. You see now most of the common people are now familiar with this novel coronavirus, but there are other types of viruses that also exist. And I'm going to talk about one of the most common human viruses, the Epstein-Barr virus, that is also known as the human herpes virus 4. And it is a leading agent of infectious mononucleosis and an inducer of various epithelial as well as uh, lymphoid cell malignancies. You know, some estimations of epidemiological studies state that the Epstein-Barr virus positive suppresses 90% of the global population. In the US every year, approximately 500 individuals out of a million people suffer from the infectious mononucleosis and about 2 million cancer cases per year are thought to be attributable to this virus. Now, before getting into the brief discussion of the noble epitope based vaccine, let's try to know the molecular structure of this virus. If you look at the figure, you can see the virus is, you know, the virus is a member of the G herpes variety subfamily one, and its genome is compromised of a linear double stranded DNA with a genome size of approximately 107 to 2 kilobase per and there are more than 85 genes are encoded in the genome. And from the uh, figure, you can see that the DNA is surrounded by a protein nucleocapsid, which is surrounded by a tegument made of protein, which in turn is surrounded by an envelope containing both lipids and surface projections of glycoproteins. And these are essential for the virus to infect a host cell. And for this virus, there are two subtypes mainly, which are, we can say type one and type B, and they are also happen to be called type A and type B. And now, uh, unfortunately, till today, there is no licensed vaccine for this virus. And earlier discovered vaccine did not prove to be much efficacious, and the vaccine discovery is still going on. And what we did in our study is that an effective multivalent vaccine has been developed following the immunoinformatics approach against the two most virulent strains of this virus, the type one and the type two. Uh, what we did was we identified novel antigens by retrieving its genomic data. Following that, the vaccine was developed by analyzing the genome using multiple tools of uh, in silico biology and bioinformatics. So in our study, an epitope-based polyvalent vaccine was designed to produce a substantial immune response towards both types of the strains. Uh, and we targeted the proteins, which were the uh, enveloped glycoproteins B, uh, enveloped glycoproteins H, and enveloped glycoproteins M. And the strain, the strain AG876, was uh, used as the model model during the construction of the vaccine. The envelope glycoproteins were targeted for T cell and B cell epitope prediction and then the epitopes were screened over the criteria of 100% conservancy across both the species. Now if I talk about how we did and what methods did we follow, uh, if you can uh, follow the uh, flowchart you can see that we started with the selection of the virus and retrieval of the protein sequences. The sequences of two strains of the virus of the uh, Epstein Barr virus were recognized, and the three distinctive proteins of the virus, which I mentioned earlier the enveloped glycoprotein B, uh, enveloped glycoprotein H, and uh, enveloped glycoprotein M, were retrieved from the National Center for Biotechnology Information. And 
after doing that uh, we analyze the antigenicity and the physiochemical characteristics of the proteins we use the vaxigen version 2.0 server for conducting their antigenicity protection and the protprom server for physiochemical property analysis and then then comes the most important part of the research, research was the epitope prediction the epitopes of the selected protein sequences were predicted using the online epitope prediction server which is known as the immuno epitope database or iedb then we have predicted t cells and b cells epitopes which were rigorously assessed for antigenicity allergenicity human homology and finally cytokinin induce, uh, inducing capability of the htl epitopes and finally we have got the best selected epitopes based on those uh, criteria antigenicity non-allergenicity non-toxicity and conservancy we have constructed our vaccine and after the vaccine was constructed uh, our second process was started so after the vaccine construction uh, the vaccine was constructed using uh, various linkers and adjuvant it was gone uh, after the construction it went through physiochemical property analysis secondary and tertiary structure prediction and following that molecular docking molecular dynamic simulation immunosome uh, simulation was also conducted and then uh, exploring the interaction between the vaccine and the viral proteins the vaccine was finally subject to the codon adapt uh, codon adaptation and in silico cloning okay so that was our method and now if we look at the constructed vaccine so this was the vaccine that we constructed and the vaccine has been constructed with the best selected epitopes which could be uh, which could be you know effective to fight against the viral strength and the human beta def uh, defense in 3 adjuvant was used to conjugate the epitope together uh, for the vaccine construction and the epitopes were linked with the with this e triple uh, a a k and the padre linkers that proved to be enhanced the activity of the vaccine now if we look at the 3d structure of the vaccine it somehow looks like this and in case of this vaccine the coil structure presented the highest percentage of the amino acid we can see that here and then the uh, second most abundance of amino acid was found in the alpha helix of the protein and then uh, the beta strand contained the least amount of alpha uh, amino acid percentage and then if we look at the uh, antigenicity allergenicity and physiochemical property analysis the physiochemical analysis concluded the vaccine is highly antigenic non-allergenic which suggests that the vaccine can produce desired immune uh, immune response in the body without you know triggering any allergenic reaction to our body the vaccine possessed an isoelectric point at 9.53 with uh, suggesting it to be on the basic side along with that the vaccine turned out to be stable due to an instability index of 24.89 and aliphatic index value was measured as 73.18 which suggests as the uh, suggest the vaccine stability within body temperature the, vac uh, the vaccine proteins turned out to be hydro uh, hydrophilic due, uh, due to its negative gravity value, which is minus 0 0.250. And lastly, the vaccine uh, proved to be soluble over, uh, upon overexpression in E. coli cells. And this represents more satisfactory purification during the post-production downstream processing and then we have the molecular docking the molecular docking came up with impressive result building high free energy with a very strong interaction after the successful docking the tlr2 docked with the best vaccine construct and was taken for visualization and performing the molecular dynamic simulation study and now if we look at the graphs of the uh, immunosimulation so from the immunosimulation study, it was quite clear that the EV vaccine contains potential of producing a typical immune response, which would occur naturally due to any vaccine simulation. Not only the primary immune response against the vaccine, which was induced greatly, but it was also predicted through the study that the vaccine increased the secondary immune response significantly, as well as the injection of 
each three doses. Uh, this was duly evident as per the increased levels of different immunoglobins that increased gradually. And then if we talk about the uh, molecular dynamics simulation, this study provided efficient ev evidence to prove the potentiality of the vaccine. It shows that the vaccine has quite good stability in a biological environment. And lastly, we have the codon adaptation and the in silico cloning experiment. So from the codon adaptation and in silico cloning experiments, it was seen that the codon adaptation index, which happens to known as the CAI value, and the CAI value of this vaccine was 0 0.89. And following the codon adaptation, the predicted DNA sequence of the vaccine was inserted into this uh, PETITE plasmid, vector plasmid, between the EAE1 and the STI1 restriction sites. And due to containing sequence of this SUMO tag in the plasmid vector, the vaccine protein was uh, the vaccine protein was expected to be purified easily during the downstream processing. And that was it. And we can conclude that in our study, the vaccine occupied 100% conserved T cell and B cell epitopes. Hence, it can generate an effective immune response against the virus. Moreover, uh, the high antigenicity, non allergenicity, and non toxicity, as well as the non homology, were also considered as the criteria to select the most promising epitopes for the final vaccine construction. And consequently, the vaccine is expected to be able to generate a very good immunogenic response uh, without causing any unwanted reaction in our body. So uh, the performed experiments, all those per, uh, experiments that we conducted in this study, uh, in this study resulted that the designed polyvalent vaccine should be quite, you know, safe, uh, effective, uh, responsive to our body and to the administrate. However, since all the predictions were done following in silico method, further wet lab based studies are required to finally confirm the outcomes of the studies. Now, developing a live or, you know, inactivated vaccine for such highly infectious agent is very much costly and there are various limitations for that and for that peptide based vaccine candidates like the one we designed in this study of ours might be relatively cheaper and more effective options to reach the entire world and we can successfully combat against the EBV infections and finally i want to show my gratitude to community of biotechnology and swift integrated computation lab and the people who are working in those communities in those labs who have you know helped us uh, in our researches and i'm very much thankful to them and lastly i'm thanking to iscbsc uh, for arranging such a great webinar and please reach me at my email address i'm very much open to emails i would love to answer all your queries there Thank you very much. Thank you so much for uh, your great presentation. We will wait a few, like a minute to see if anyone watching has questions. There is a, yeah. a small delay between uh, the transmission on YouTube, so we can wait yeah sure uh, <laughs> so meanwhile you breezed through a table uh, where you show antigenicity and alert allergenicity <laughs> sorry uh, could you talk a bit more about that please um Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you just repeat the question? Yeah, you you passed. Uh, you showed a table where uh, you had information about antigenicity and allergy. Uh, allergy yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. I I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about this. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, the vaccine that we constructed passed the antigenicity and allergenicity test with uh, a very satisfactory result. And 
this result says that the vaccine is very much highly antigenic and non-allergenic. And this suggests that the vaccine can produce the desired immune response in the body without, you know, uh, aggra uh, aggravating any allergenic reactions to the body. And after that, uh, we analyzed some uh, physiochemical properties. Uh, let's first of all, we have this uh, PI value, which is the isoelectric point at 9.53. And this one suggests that the vaccine is a base on the basic side. And along with that, the vaccine turned out to be stable because, you know, when we see this II value, which is the instability index, and the instability index value is 24.89, which suggests that a vaccine is very much stable. And then we have this AI value, which is the aliphatic index, and this value is 73.18. And this too suggests that the vaccine stability within the body temperature as, you know, this high AI indicates thermostability. And again, the vaccine proteins are hydrophilic because the gravity value here is, is that we have is very much low at negative point, which is minus 0 0.250. And then if we see the half-life of the uh, vaccine, the half-life of the EV vaccine was seen to be uh, 13 hours in mammalian uh, reticula reticulocytes and uh, greater than 10 hours in the E. coli cell culture system. That suggests that the mass production, uh, production and the purification of the vaccines uh, should run smoothly in the E. coli cell culture system. And finally, we can say that the vaccine proved to be soluble uh, upon overexpression in the E. coli cells, and this represents more satisfactory uh, satisfactory purification during the post -pro uh, production downstream processing. I hope that's clear. Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh, there seem to be no questions from people watching, so thank you again uh, for your presentation. Uh, thank you to everyone watching the stream or the video later on YouTube. And, uh, a reminder to follow us on Twitter and Facebook so you can know about future webinars and how to participate. Thank you so much again uh, and goodbye. Okay, have a safe day and a good day.